Okay. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I hope you all had a chance to grab some afternoon tea. And welcome to our session on learning from Indigenous engagement. Um, before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the beautiful land upon which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, um, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. I'd also like to extend that respect to uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people um, joining us today, both in person um, and, and online as well. My name is Rachel Vavra. I'll be your facilitator for today's session. And I am a Torres Strait Islander woman um, with family heritage from Darnley Island, Stephen Island, and the Saibai Islands in the Torres Strait Islands. I work at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade in the New Colombo Plan Secretariat alumni team. Last year in Darwin, our then secretary, Frances Adamson, launched our Indigenous Diplomacy Agenda. Um, to provide an approach to Indigenous Australia, a systematic place within our overseas engagement, and to more effectively advance the interests of Indigenous people in Australia and overseas. Her keynote address during that launch highlighted that Australia's international diplomacy is increasingly shaped by Indigenous cultures and people and we must continue to build Indigenous culture, Indigenous Australia into our diplomacy, its people, its culture, its languages, and its history. Today, we are joined by a distinguished panel of speakers, many who have traveled far and wide to be here today, to share their epistemological and lived insights on learning from Indigenous engagement, and how we can champion and draw on the wealth of knowledge systems of learning and practices of engagement from our First Nation Australians. I'd now like to invite our panel up to the stage. Great, so our panel today is made up of, um, we have some online participants and also in-person participants, as you can see. So, um, firstly, joining us online today, we have Mrs. Joy Balkanaway. Um, and Joy works as a researcher and senior lecturer, lecturer in Aboriginal studies at Charles Darwin University. Joy has 20 years of Yongu health professional experience. We also have joining us online is Mr. Garawa, um, Garawa is a researcher and senior lecturer, lecturer in Aboriginal Studies at Charles Darwin University as well. And both Garawa and Joy work closely with um, CDU's Northern Institute researchers, as well as Yongu teachers providing guidance, cultural authority and education. Um, we also have Mr Willie Wigness, who's uh, travelled all the way from Thursday Island in the Torres Straits to be here today. Um, Willie is an acknowledged elder and leader in his tribe with lifelong ecological knowledge and native science. Willie has over 30 years experience working in Australian law and order at state, national and international level. Um, next we have Mr Jordan Ivey and I'm sure many of you know Jordan. Jordan was a New Colombo Plan Scholar to Fiji in 2019 and he also undertook an internship to the Philippines through Charles Darwin University. Jordan was also our 2019 Indigenous uh, Alumni Ambassador. Mr Ivey holds a Bachelor Degree of Marine Science and Management, and since graduating, Jordan has been a Research Assistant and Indigenous Engagement Officer on various coral larva restorations projects on the Great Barrier Reef. And he currently works with the Australian Institute of Marine Science as the Indigenous Training and Capacity Building Officer. Uh, next, we have Miss Lily Kennedy, and Lily is a 2020 scholar and a passionate member of the NCP community. With an undergraduate degree in public relations, she's worked in a variety of roles across Brisbane, London, and New York. 
In 2015, Lily undertook an Indigenous cultural immersion program in uh, the APY lands in South Australia. And last but not least, we have Mr Greg Williams. And Greg is the coordinator of the Master of Public Policy in the Northern Institute, and he also works in the College of Indigenous Future Education and Arts at CDU. And Greg has worked as a lecturer for over 20 years, both in vocational education and training and higher education as well. Now, I'd like to begin this session today by handing over to our First Nation elders from Yongu and the Torres Strait, Joy, Gara and Willie, to show us firsthand how they conduct cultural diplomacy. So Willie, I'm gonna hand it over to you now <laughs> to begin. Thank you. Thank you. I'm on. Kapu Batainga, Nitumun Pamura. Good afternoon to all of you. Ngau Nel Niaungu. My name is Niaungu. Ngau Markai Nel is Willie Wigness. My English name is Willie Wigness. Ngai Kanamuri. I come from a clan of Kanamuri. Ngau Mabaigal Kauraraik, a tribe of Kauraraik. Ngau Lag Kedatarapa, Kaiwalagal. A traditional boundary and country region is called Kaiwalagal. It's a pleasure to stand here and talk to all of you. When I look into the crowd, I'm talking to a nation of people. Nation of beautiful people here, yeah. intelligent people. I read some of your bios. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of subjects you got in three or four, I think, wow, didn't, why shouldn't I have that in, when I was in the 60s? <laughs> so, my, my friends, Gaura and Joy, from Yunlu country, Respect from Yunlu as well. Respect to my panels from where they come from. Respect to everyone. Diplomacy. What is diplomacy? Cultural diplomacy. What is that? That's my traditional title. Butu Augar Kuik from a governance a traditional setting, is that diplomacy? Or diplomacy is, you've already learned through life diplomacy, each and every one of you, strangers to one another, yet your communication with one another to find a very principle the same. When I go into Yunlu country, that diplomacy like what we've done here in, in uh, this same facility, ANU. We had to look for that same very principle. But when I meet Joy and, and Gaura and the others, we joined straight away because our principle was the same. Our governance was the same. Our moiety was the same. In the Torres Strait, we headhunters. That's just it. We take heads, regardless. Modern days, like me here now, how do I practice that in a modern setting? You can't, <laughs> honestly. So I had to adapt because of the laws, L-O-R-E, and the rules of laws, L-A-W, they don't see eye to eye. So I had to balance. My old people, elders said, we need to change if you want to survive. So we did that. Basically that. To survive, we need to change. But we kept the principle alive. My university is not like this, what you guys are going through. 
our teaching, our university is out there. It's nature. Our laws is governed by nature. Our setting is governed by nature. The four elements, the four winds, the seasons, how the animal reacts, the settings of the suns, the moons. That's our university. Never got the chance to go to places like this. Gaura enjoys the same. But cultural diplomacy, a window into First Nation people's governance. We have it here in, in Australia itself. Majority of Australians don't know we have it. It's only through sessions like this. We have moities that we follow. My moity is the Hamed Shah and the Jugong. We are patriarchal. My tribe is patriarchal. It's not matriarchal. But I had to balance that. We had to change in this world as well. Balance the woman's side with the man's side. And we've perfected it. We're still here. We pushed our women into the world today as well. Go get education. Build yourself up. Go be a CEO. Go be a manager. Go further down south. But when you come home, don't forget your other foot is in the cultural arena as well. You've got to respect that, your positioning. Positioning of everybody within the cultural diplomacy is very sensitive. Very sensitive. It puts you in a different degree. Like, for instance, my title, Gaura and Joy's title. We're sitting in the inner circles of our governance. Is that the same as Canberra's parliament? Is there a similarity? We look for similarities. You'll find this when you go out into the world. You'll do this as well. Other tribes, other nations, they'll have different things. Habit, body language, character of the person. We call it Wakai Wian. Wakai Wian is what we're doing now. We're learning from each other. Sitting next to a stranger, how does that feel? Insecure. You don't want to do anything wrong. Communication, come, well, how can I make some conversation, make some friends? Is that diplomacy? Simple things will start everything off. Little things that you miss that grinds things together will form that foundation. Don't take it for granted. If you miss it, it's going to be like now. What I'm saying now, most of you don't know that First Nation people have governance or we have moities because you haven't been in that world because of statecraft, commonwealth craft, how you've been structured through family structures. We haven't got all these things in the education systems, all the sensitive stuff. But cultural diplomacy is the key. 
We started here in Australia. You go overseas, you'll have to talk to those people overseas, cultural diplomacy, Australia culture to their culture. My colleagues will tell you their experiences. Gaura, you're right to say anything? Is it my turn now? <laughs> yeah, no, you talk. <laughs> Forgive us, this yeah. is our first time in situations like this, me and my other two colleagues from Yulnu country facing so many audiences like this. <laughs> All right, Gaura. Yo, thank you, Uncle Willie. So first of all, I would like to um, that I introduce myself, just a quick one. Kaura, I'm a Yolmo, Yolmo person. I'm a Yolmo person, and my name is Kaura. Marango, my clan group is Marango. North East Arnhem Land, I'm from North East Arnhem Land. Same with my colleague, Joey Your first acknowledgement to the Yawang Watangumala, acknowledging the custodian, Stephenry, the Unual Amri people from Canberra, past, present, emerging. Yo, uh, yeah, cultural diplomacy, just to sort of add Tipale. To that, the police, to that, Uncle Will. <laughs> Yo, um, sorry that um, English, to be honest, like English is not our first language. For me, it's probably the 10th uh, on the roll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I speak a lot of other, other Yolong languages. And on top of that, it's English. So you will sort of experience something that is very um, different to how it is uh, uh, Englishmen uh, talking to another Englishman, hearing English from a black fellow like me. Sorry to say this, but yeah, our, uh, some of our English are not so unique. So anyway, we we'll just have to, and we always try our best to sort of give as much as we can. Anyway, uh, cultural competency, uh, sorry, cultural Diplomacy, cultural diplomacy for Yolmo, for Yolmo, like uh, we, we um, most, most of the uh, areas, because we, we um, Yolmo, um, um, Karek, uh, Uncle Willie and the others, we met there at Canberra once, and the Ngunu al uh, people from there, from Canberra, we met there once for this, uh, Diplomacy, young um, indigenous diplomacy, and they uh, did a lot of workshops together. So uh, I think most of most of what what's been said by Uncle Willie is is very in common, very in common, especially to Yolmo. Now, for Yolmo, especially for Yolmo, this is Yolmo up uh, up 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 the um, northern territory, up right at the East Arnhem Land area, right up even the West Arnhem Land. Now, as Uncle Willie was saying that we've got, we've got moieties, we've got two moieties, Towa and a Yiritya moiety. Towa and a Yiritya moiety. And there are so many in there, so many in there. When, when we talk about the diplomacy, when we talk about the name diplomacy, what is the so what is the diplomacy, the indigenous diplomacy up up that way in your way, Aukajan? In your way, your way of seeing the diplomacy, how we are, we don't sort of create, we don't sort of create something new when it comes to diplomacy. We've already got it. It is in us. We've got it. It's been with us. We are being born with it. It is there. What I mean by it is there already that we are being born with it. It has been placed there by our ancestral beings that we 
uh, believed by two or two or ancestral being and a Yidike multi ancestral being that has sort of um, given everything for us. They created to be as a diplomacy once and for all. They created once and for all to sort of for us to use it. To use it. Most of the diplomacy is to do with ceremonies when we get together. The big connections that we've got, the alliances that we've got, the ceremonial connections that we've got, that brings, that, that, that it is there, it is shown that it's been placed by our ancestral beings. It is there already. We don't call other tribes when there's a big ceremony. We don't call other tribes. They know that there is a ceremony and that connection, that there's, there needs to be a diplomacy, that to go and reach and to sort of be in that temple diplomacy that has been placed, that has been created there by our ancestral beings. So, for Yolmo and for any other indigenous Yolmo or Aboriginal people around the country, I think it's, it is, that's how it is. It's been sort of placed by our ancestral beings once and for all. We've got it. It is to do with our culture. It is to do with the gatherings that we do for our ceremonies. That's diplomacy. It is to do with our kinship. The guru, to what we call the guru, to everyone, every yorngu is related to each other. There's no one yorngu that is on its own, on our own, on its own. Everyone is related to each other. Everyone has con got that connection, ceremonial connection, alliances. That's that. That's that shows that. That's that. That's how it is. That's the deployment. That diplomacy. I know it's a bit different how it is in 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 in, in, in the um, non-indigenous system where you can sort of, you know you know, engage or um, witness someone that it, you don't know, a stranger that'll be, that would be there. And then you'll probably know that person and work on whatever after a while. One country a meeting with another country, coming into an agreement on whatever, two groups of people. See, it's in your law, in our, in our system, of diplomacy is very different. It's been placed there. It is already there. It has been placed. It is in us. We are always every 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 young is being born with it. We are sort of born to to it. It is there. That's how we sort of um, understand how our diplomacy is. It is there. It is in our culture. It is in our kinship room. It is in our land. It's not only us. It is our land as well, the place, the states that we've got. Every clan group that's got their own in states. It is to do with the land as well. They they are they are also related to each other as well. And has got that moieties. Now this is all shows it all shows that this is diplomacy. It is a young diplomacy. Yo, Yo. I'll I hand it over to my colleague, Joy, to add more into this ma. Yo, now I made a bookmark. Yes. Hello. How are you all? Maraya Kobulkanoi. My name is Pulkanoi. Mara. I am from Galewin O. Marako Wanga Moriorituro. My interstate country homeland is Moriorituro. And I work close with my colleague, Gaura and others. And I known Uncle Willie when I first met him 
at Canberra. He was a great man. When we went over for our um, workshop, um, for diplomacy workshop, and we found many things in that during those time when he was doing diplomacy workshop with Gora, Willie, um, Lalani, and Gabriel. They were just great people that we met them. We found that something was there for us already. There was a connection with them for us. And they had that connection with them for us as well. It was so wonderful that we met and find something that is great to work together in that area, in diplomacy, indigenous diplomacy. And that's how it's very interested someone like Uncle Willie, he's from Torres Strait, but there was a connection back to where Gora and I come from. And every day when we meet, going to start preparing ourselves for diplomacy workshop, we go through flows. Because there was a connection, as you heard about Uncle Willie, what he was saying before, earlier, that's what it is. That's how indigenous diplomacy work. And now we are looking forward to see how we can engage with other all nations to work and show that. Thank you. Thank you, Gaura Joy. You must remember from the views, the window of First Nation people, like me, descendants, like the descendants. Our ancestors, our old people, have never succeeded to any colonization. The truth of it, we were forced. There's no documentation saying that. Our governance, we don't work in silos. We work with this, then work with this. No. It's like a circle, inner circle, inner circles. When I see, Gaura and Joy see this, and we look how the parliament works, lower house, upper house, and we start to think, wow, it's similar. What's the difference? I am from the inner circle. These two are from the inner circles. We're governance of our own tribe and laws. We look after them. We, on, we haven't got one portfolio for this person, another portfolio. Tribal system, clan system are totally different. When you go out into where the doors open, you'll find the same thing. Listen, seek those that understand. You'll get those that come across you that will lead you this way and then that way then when you come to see the old picture, they're the wrong people you talk to. The right ones are sitting over there, under the tree watching you. What, what the hell are you doing? They are there, but it's for you to look, read what God has given you. Body language, tilting of the head, fidgeting, nervousness. You've all got it. There's no doubt about it. You've all got it. We've got it. You've got it. You're practicing 
diplomacy, communication from the very day you were born. That's cultural teaching. It's there. But when you come to put in an arena like this into a departmental stuff, it's up to you whether you take it with you or you lose it and you get in the silo effect. I will leave it like that. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, just thank you so much, Willie, Joy, Gara, just hearing your insights on cultural diplomacy, how you will do it, um, in, you know, together, coming from very different places is just so amazing and was really insightful. And I think, you know, hearing lots about the, the connections and similarities, Willie and I just met, um, you know, we'd spoken online, but just met together for the first time about an hour ago. It was really interesting just chatting, finding out that, you know, both being Torres Strait, we're related, and Willie's family had come and stayed with my family in a small Torres Strait Island community in Cape York. So yeah. just building that connection straight away. And I think for a lot of um, kind of scholars and alumni I've seen, there's often a connection when you come back based, and I've seen it today as well, like based on where you've been. Um, and it's great to see like languages coming out as well based on the languages that you've spoken or learnt um, where you're going or come back. So lots of similarities, those connections being um, formed today, which has been great. Um, I'd now like to hand over to, to Jordan. Um, and uh, Jordan, it would just be really great building on from today's discussion to hear a little bit about you as an Indigenous man, um, how you used your cultural knowledge um, going overseas to feed you on your NCP uh, scholarship program. And also just to hear about your work with the Australian Institute of Marine Science. And I know you do a lot of work with Indigenous communities and how you work with Indigenous communities during that role. Yeah, yeah no worries. <laughs> it's working. Um, so I'm a Bundjalung man, I've come from northern New South Wales, also um, have South Sea Islander heritage stemming back to Vanuatu. Um, so I'm a 2019 scholar, went to Fiji as that's already been told. Um, I used a lot of my cultural understanding from my country where I've worked on country, working with um, some of the mob, doing bush regeneration and I utilised that knowledge throughout my scholarship. Um, I ended up doing an internship where I'd done a research component, um, studying coral reefs and the impacts of coral restoration on um, fish species diversity and abundance. Um, I used my cultural knowledge and my understanding uh, and um, went into the village and asked for consent before I actually went into the sea country to do any work, just because back home I know that's what you're supposed to do. Um, I didn't want to upset anybody, I want to make sure I went through all the right avenues. So I'd done that, got consent, done my research out on, um, out on their sea country, monitoring their, their corals and their fish, and supplied that report back to them for their, uh, their ongoing monitoring pro uh, programs and management of their fish. Um, funny thing is, like, we, we also got some consent to do some coral spawning monitoring while we were on that trip, which is really good, and that shows you the importance of the consent process there because in Fiji, they run, they run their sea country a bit different to they do it over here. Um, the villagers look after their sea country there. Um, so they, they, they're in charge of policing it because they don't have the, the same police mechanisms in place um, to do that. And so we went out coral spawning, had torches. We were looking to see what corals this morning, try and monitor that. And um, we got dobbed in <laughs> a couple of times by the, the islanders there. They're like, oh, there, there's people out, out with lights and because the worry is that um, people go out fishing at night time to try and spear fish that are resting, because mm. they're quite easy to spear when they're resting. They'll just sit there, they won't move. And it's, it's, not, it's not appropriate, and it, it ruins the local um, food source for them. And so we got dobbed in, like, which is good to know that they're policing it. The, the chief said, oh, you guys were out, weren't you? It's like, <laughs> like yeah, that was us. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's all good. We knew you were going out there, so it was really good. And having that experience was great. It built on my, um, my cultural knowledge and my cultural journey that I'm going on as a young Indigenous man. Um, I've ended up bringing all that knowledge and that experience from the New Colombo Plan Scholarship to my current workplace now, where I'm working at the Australian Institute for Marine Science. Um, I started off in Indigenous engagement. So it was, um, we have a policy where it's called FPIC, 
have free prior informed consent. So for any researcher to go out onto country, they have to engage through our team to engage with the Indigenous group to inform them about the research we want to do on their country so they can make an informed decision about whether they want that research to happen on their country. And so we've done a few ones. Some people do say no, which is fine. And then we just go back to the research and say, they've said no, you're not allowed to do your research on that country. Um, it's really good. It's putting decision making back in the hands of the Indigenous people up and down our coastlines. Um, Aims like the Australian Institute of Marine Science is mostly tropical, so tropical north, north Australia. Um, so that's where we go there, and it's actually helped me a lot having that little experience in NCP, and obviously my background working on country as well has really helped me through that role. And now I've moved on to a different role where I'm doing training and trying to work with TOs to develop um, training modules to um, see how we can bring traditional knowledge together with Western science knowledge to try and develop management plans that are going to benefit both um, the Australian Institute of Marine Science and the traditional owner group that we'll be working with in multiple sea countries. So that's kind of where my journey is and it's led me to here right now, so I can't really tell too much more until I have the rest of that journey. But yeah, yeah. thank you. Oh wow, thanks Jordan. That, that's such an amazing story and it's great hearing about your journey and how I, you know, you used your cultural knowledge overseas but then you also built on it, bringing it back to your community and the work that you do today. So it's just, yeah, a really fantastic story to hear. Thanks for sharing that with us. Thank you. <laughs> So um, I'd now like to hand over to Lily Kennedy. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Lily undertook a cultural immersion program, uh, Indigenous uh, cultural immersion program to the APY lands in South Australia in 2015. Um, and then she sub subsequently travelled overseas. Um, and then uh, she's about to head over, hopefully soon, on her NCP scholarship. So, um, Lily, it would be great to hear from you just on how you use what you learnt in your Indigenous Cultural Immersion Program um, on your overseas travels and how you plan to use it going overseas as a 2020 scholar when you head out. For sure. Thanks, Rachel. And I just want to begin by to acknowledging uh, the elders past, present and emerging and the people that are here with us today and it's so special to have, uh, yeah, Willie's, uh, you guys haven't heard about the travel story but I mean it's been quite the mission to come down here so yeah just extending how grateful we all are on behalf of the, the NCP community. Um, but yeah so my role on this panel today is essentially to give you an insight as a non-Indigenous person on the cultural immersion program I did and how that kind of impacts my relationships when I'm overseas and how I present myself. Um, and I'd say that, firstly, talking about the immersion program, the, the sort of things I learned, obviously I can't summarise it all in, a, in five minutes, um, <laughs> but I suppose that deeper understanding of community but also cultural structure and the way, the, the sort of things Willie was talking about before in terms of how their governance structures are but also how the different communities are, what they value, the different roles people have, um, and obviously sort of women's business and men's business. I know a lot of scholars, or I, I would hope that a lot of scholars would know what I'm talking about here. Um, but yeah, I think as well understanding the issues um, that they do face and how we as non-Indigenous people can try and bridge those and assist them. But even, you know, we, we know things like land titles, I know that makes the news a lot, the sort of legal land titles and challenges like that, but there were some things that I noticed while I was in this Indigenous community that I hadn't before. So for example, like groceries, if you went to the grocery store, you know, people say, oh, you know, get fruit and vegetables, and they, they have these health programs coming out telling them to eat healthy, and then you go down to the supermarket and a, a leaf, bunch, whatever you call it, of lettuce is like $11 and it's like the practicalities and the way that policy and the real life interact was really insightful but um, even just down to storylines and understanding how land matters and why the land matters and those sorts of things um, and then I guess I remember most how it felt and how warmly embraced I was or my small group that I went with was uh, by that APY lands community and I suppose 
knowing sort of what colonization's done, I had thought, you know, fair enough if they don't want us to be there and they, you know, don't want to share certain things. But they were so welcoming and so warm and so embracing, but also understanding and feeling their connection to country and the way that they were so deeply rooted and grounded um, was really incredible. But then the second part of um, when I'm overseas, and I think it's, my comments will be pretty much the same for the times I've been overseas since then, but also how I plan to conduct myself in Japan. Um, I'd say that in terms of, <laughs> hi, um, in terms of uh, our role when we're overseas, it's uh, obviously there's, there's things that are not ours to share, there's stories that are not mine to share, but equally it's sort of about planting that seed and in conversations if someone says like, oh, Lily, where are you from? It's not just saying, oh yeah, I'm from, I'm from Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. It's like, you know, talking about that Brisbane's called Mianjin to the local people, talking about saying, oh yeah, it's not just Queensland, there's actually you know, however many language groups, there's all of these states, there's, uh, you know, not just defining Australia as what people overseas think it is. And I think even just those little tiny seeds, just planting those seeds. Um, and often, you know, I've found that people are inquisitive and they'll say, oh, you know, so what happens, what, you know, what happens over there? And particularly, I know when I've been in some countries, they'll want to have, people from other countries will want to have discussions about how their relations are with their local people and, you know, ask about Australia and, oh, what's it like for you, you know, do you have Indigenous friends, those sorts of things. So I think just being ready to answer those questions and expect those questions. Um, and, yeah, just sharing what's appropriate, but starting conversations and, yeah. Yes. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Thanks, Lily. That was really great to hear, and it's really great to hear how you're using that overseas. So, thank you. No worries. And now I'd like to hand over to Greg just to tell us a little bit about the work, Greg, that you're doing at Charles Darwin University. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. Greg Williams, and I've been working at Charles Darwin University for nearly 30 years, actually, in the, in the job in the Indigenous Studies area. Some people would probably say I'm a bit of a slow learner that I've been there 30 years and still haven't <laughs> learned very much. Um, but I guess when I listen to what's happening here, I think the thing that you'll notice is that what we're actually doing in this space right now is the sort of diplomacy work that Willie's talking about. Each one of us is telling a little story about ourselves because we're strangers and we don't know each other. And like Willie was saying before, you're sitting next to someone now and you all the little things that are doing, you're doing to sort of go, you know, giving people space, smiling, nodding, that's all diplomacy and it's the little stuff. And the thing that I think that is important to remember is that we're all dipl diplomats in that space because we're all working with people who are different to each other. The other thing that I think is really important with this too, um, in this <laughs> 30 years of me being a very slow learner, is basically to pay attention to what it is that's going on because often people with brains like mine are trained in the silos that Willie's talking about on a job and we're doing stuff but you've got to look around you've got to pay attention to those little things and to keep paying attention to them and the third thing I think that's really important and hopefully this is useful for you is that um, often I mean maybe you, you might have been listening to Gara and Joy and Willie listening and, and speaking this talking in this afternoon, and you might be going, I I'm not really sure what it is they're talking about. Mm -hmm. Some of you might be in that sort of boat. Mm -hmm. And it's really important, I think, to keep in mind and to pay attention to the times when you don't understand what's going on, when you don't get what's happening to you. And this experience is sort of washing past you and you're going, what the heck was that? Mm -hmm. I spent 30 years working with Indigenous people and even still now, there's times when I just, I'm sitting in a room and people are talking about stuff and I'm just going, I must be stupid, I just, I just don't get what's going on here. Pay attention to those times, because those times of disconcertment, those times when you, your gut's feeling a bit strange because you don't know what's going on, those are the times we're going to learn. 
And I think one of the things that, that I've learnt over time is in the teaching that I do, which is about people working in spaces like this, working interculturally and, and trying to, to make sense of the way in which they work together, particularly respectfully in intercultural situations. Um, those are probably the three things that I've learnt. Probably hard learnt because I've made so many mistakes, um, but those are probably the three things. If you can remember that you're all diplomats and that you're doing diplomacy right now, right here, every time you meet with someone, it requires you to do a lot of work to pay attention and it's, um, it's those hard, those complex, those gut-wrenching times. Stick with them because they're the times that you're going to learn and that's really important. Did you want me to talk about... Yeah, one, one of the things that I wanted to, to offer today um, in partnership with DFAT um, and the NCP program is to offer some positions in some of the programs that we run. Um, we have an on-country program that we're running this year and I'd like to offer some places for people within that program to come and join us for a week where we're out um, on-country engaging with people um, in learning how to, to work interculturally. And additionally, we're actually, Gara and Joy and Willie, hopefully as well, will be running a workshop um, in Darwin in, the, in July where different nations, Indigenous nations, are coming together to enact diplomacy. So the, we, what we'd do, like to do too is to offer some positions for people to come and join us in those programs this year. First one um, we're running in the first week of July and then the second one we're running in the second week of July. So, um, yeah, I'd just like to open that up and uh, be looking forward to... We'll, we'll organise some processes for how we can um, uh, organise people to, to apply for that, but I just want to put out there that that's um, available and looking forward to people coming and joining us. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Greg, and thanks so much for your um, valuable advice. It was fantastic. And I'd just like to also add that DFAT in partnership with um, CDU is so excited to be able to offer these opportunities to some of our NCP scholars, uh, their pilot programs, and we will be conducting a, an expression of interest round um, for the pilots. Um, we have a few minutes left, and I just thought we might finish today's session um, with either Willie, Gara, Joy. It would be really great if, you know, for you to provide some any tips or advice you have to some of our scholars who are heading out overseas on how they could get a better understanding of Indigenous culture before they head out overseas. I know you've talked about a lot today, but if there was just you know one piece of advice that you could give them um, before they head out, uh, you know, what would you recommend? Or how? Wow. <laughs> <I> just <laughs> things. Well, first thing you're going to say. Wow, I'm going overseas. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, just be yourself. Know the principle you stand on. Respect the principle you stand on. Respect other creed, races. Be comfortable in there. Body language, habits, tilting, Fidgety will tell all. Relax. Just go with the flow. You will make mistakes. There's no doubt about that. But you will correct them again. That's just life. Yo, Gaura. Your time. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, my Yeah, just to sort of no, I'm not going to put uh, the way how it is. You're going to put in a way to be, fair, be friendly. <laughs> mm. Always welcome strangers, anyone, anyone that you don't know. The meeting has to be for the first time, but not to sort of, as I said earlier, welcome, welcome that situation. Always be open, <laughs> but that's how you need to find and sort of create that diplomacy based there. So I guess that's, that's, that's what 
that's the um, thing that can sort of um, create that space always to be um, not to be hard really you always need to be uh, open in spirit to allow and to welcome whatever or whoever that needs to communicate yeah to be just an open spirit person like you know <laughs> thanks so that, um, so that um, there's no but as the quote really said yeah there, there needs to be some there's gonna be some mistakes but there are areas that somehow you, you need to sort of learn from those mistakes by doing right and doing it some other way, the best way, the good way. Yo. <laughs> thank, thank you, Uncle Willie. And Gaura, I think you already touched all the base that we need to say. Thank you very much. Ta. Great. Thank you very much. Um, I would just like to really sincerely thank our panellists for sharing their knowledge and insights with us today. It's been a really invaluable session and I know I've learned a lot from today's session and I'm, I'm sure our uh, audience has as well. So just one final round of applause. Thank you so much.